Ladies and gentlemen, I hear that there's some trouble going about. Trouble in Phil Collins. <laughs> but he didn't even make any. He didn't even make any song for this movie. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. I was say. <laughs> Welcome to our re- some somewhat philorific look at on Disney's Lilo and Stitch for the PS One, also known as Crash Goes to Hawaii. Yeah. Also known as Trouble in Paradise on PC. Yes. Yeah. Um. Trouble actually, I. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Trouble in Paradise. Um, I do remember, like, back in my own childhood, I did get the PC version, which also came... came. Uh, it was like it was part of a dual pack between this and uh, this, one of those uh, fun activity sort of games that are that are based on the movie. Ah. And I was kind of... It was kind of a shame that my PC at the time couldn't really run it. But, I mean, I still have my fun with the activity things. Meanwhile, at Lilo's house... <clears throat> Lilo... <laughs> I also, I also remember this one. Oh, hang on. This is, my, this is the only thing I remember. Come on, Stitch. Oh, God. Oh, what are we doing with that frog there? Don't mind. He just likes playing with the frog. Oh, Wait. God. Nani. Nani looks so weird. Yeah. Oh, year was this released? Okay. 2002-ish. Dang. It came out roughly around the same time as the movie. Hey, I think I was around 8 or 9. Wait, no. That's 2004. One more. Shinderu. Nani! <laughs> Devil damn it. <laughs> why, like, why do I have a funny feeling you were going to do that? So, yeah, um, so the funny thing about the Lilo and Stitch game, well, first of all, I had to cut, there, there are some uh, movie scenes spliced here and there, but, you know, yes. YouTube's current algorithms, right. I had to get rid of them. Uh, secondly, right. um, cool. the way this game is structured is kind of interesting in that, I mean, yeah, most, all of the levels are pretty much, um, Crash Bandicoot knockoffs, like, but, like, uh, before you do start a level, like, you have this sort of hub world in a sense where you pick your path hmm. mm-hmm. although it is all still pretty linear so how is Lilo gonna defend herself Why, well with a voodoo doll oh yeah with scrub yeah it's scrub I love scrub it's like, I made her head too big so I pretend a bug laid eggs in her ears Ears, so then she could get <coughs> she did know voodoo or she oh, was yeah. trying to voodoo for beginners my friend all my friends need to be punished yeah. <laughs> um. Every whenever I do play this game, I just think to myself, let's just pretend for a moment that this is all in Lilo's head, and that's why her, why her why her doll can do such uh, do such destructive damage. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me that this is just how she views her whole little adventure. Also, yes, clear. I even more so than even more so than with Donald. Am I seeing the Crash Bandicoot? Uh, inspirations. I know it really is a. I know it really is a tomato tomato thing, but I am feeling more reminded of going crackers than I am just standard crash. Yeah. Well, I mean they're both Disney, so it makes sense. Well, also, I will just say like, between the two, I do think um, I do think uh, going crackers is a superior game just because it has a little more te- uh, tech to it. But to some, I, if you mm-hmm. like a better word. Yeah, I just mean like just in terms of I could just tell right now like they both have that same kind of like spacious, very simplistic mentality of level design. But whereas with Going Crackers, it works because with Going Crackers, it's more so a matter of a lot of the fun comes from just going seeing how fast you can go through a level. Whereas with this, it's just go at your own pace. Yeah, Uh, Sealy, what do you think of all this? Uh, oh, I, I don't really know what to say. It hasn't. What do you think of the movie? Have you Have you ever watched the, the uh, movie, Sealy? Yes, I have. Hmm. What, do you think of, what did you think of the movie? Yeah, what's up with the movie? I like the movie. Did I you ever that. watch the cartoon series? I think just one episode. I watched the whole series. <laughs> I saw Same. the pilot TV series, and then then I know they made a bunch of specials. Some specials were made far after the series had ever ended, so that was mm. super confusing. I remember the crossover episodes with Recess, The Proud Family, oh, yeah. and uh, Kim, Kim Possible, Possible and American Dragon. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and American Dragon Jake Long. Oh, we're we gonna fight the boss, the I guess random so. boss in this game. Oh yeah, another thing that Lila likes to imagine is that she that whenever she's going going through the town, she has to take down these random um to- uh, tiki gods. Well then, but she just hit hit their weak spot on their back. It's weird. Yeah, and it's a I... it's a pretty abysmal boss here. Like he'll just yeah, and forward. honestly, this pretty much makes up a Don't. good majority of the boss fights in massive quotes in this game. But it also leads to something I do find kind of clever: is that uh, you'll know the way you have to go when a block when a boss is blocking the way. Yeah. So now we know we should go to the car park. Yay! And this time we're gonna call upon Stitch's help. Now Stitch has a meter that when I was playing the PC version, I never understood. What 
does the good bad meter on Stitch actually mean? Well, in this game's case, it's I wouldn't outright call it so much a good bad meter, even though that technically was a part of the movie. Um, so Stitch's collectibles in this game are well mugs of coffee. And the more he drinks, the more his meter fills up. Now, once it's filled up all the way, uh, Stitch Stitch is not only more powerful, but he's also he also his running speed is also faster. And yes, uh, just to rub it, run the point home that this is a crash clone. Spin, Stitch can also spin. Yay! Woo! Oops. The spin animation is pretty good, though. Well, for their budget. Yeah. It works, so it's a little delayed. But yeah, when I see the red on the left, it, I always thought I was like, am I doing something wrong here? <laughs> Stitch is go getting getting rusty steamy hot. Just like a, how I am on coffee. <laughs> Did we do it? Have we done anything? Or are we planning on doing anything for uh, Experiment Six Two Six? Um, I would love to, but Elgato does not like does not like me playing it. Aww. So not in time soon. I will see. I'll see if I'll see if EPSXC likes it. I know uh, I own the game personally myself. It's a it's a, well it's a it's a PS2 game, so you'd have to run or not, on the other. Well, I was gonna say like I, I, or not EP. There's our range. Okay, and if not EPSXC2, I mean, uh, I know I I've, I've emulated before and it has worked. That's how I did um, Maximo that one time. Oh. Well, if it works, then go for it. Oh boy. Just yeah, I just I do remember trying to record that game at one point or another, but it's like once it gets to the title screen, it's all just. It's just black noise. Mm -hmm. And well, I will say, I will say, since I did brought it up, like, again, just for the sake of potential filler we could do at a later point, they also made, I think, one or two Game Boy Advance games as well that are more so based on the show. Mm. I know the first one was based on the movie, but the second one was definitely based on the uh, TV series. Yeah. Okay. Has anyone seen Leroy and Stitch? I have. I've I've heard of it. I heard it was a pretty decent uh, finale for the series. It was yeah, a cute finale. It. Oh yeah, Just... one other thing is that uh, when your bar's filled up, you can also press the triangle button for, and Stitch will go into this ball form that makes him impervious to pretty much anything. Except, uh, except for pits. Jesus you can follow the pits. <laughs> right. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, running gag from Spyro with the the word hogs. It's like, well, let's see if he just tamoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last word he ever gets out every time. <laughs> I don't know. Why. Also, yeah, now we have now we have a little Frogger elements as well, so that's see if we can look back up and realize, oh yeah, this is another game we did. Oh jeez. Ah, <laughs> yes. uh, memories. Good old memories. Go, Just, yeah, go. That's what, uh, oh boy, I don't, can't don't, stop. Don't, don't, don't. Just like me when oh, I'm boy. on coffee. Yeah, no, I, I think this is okay. I think I think the game is serviceable for what it was. This is again, I I played a lot of games like this when I was a kid. The main game I played that I remember the most was I think it was um, I forget I forgot its actual name, but it was a Monsters Inc. one that was meant to be like a prequel involving uh, Scream Team. Yeah, oh, which he also rewarded. Oh sweet, yeah, that's the one I played the most of. Which actually, I I remember really enjoying that one. It had this cool Metroidvania kind of inspiration to it, and yeah, you miss one coffee mug. Oh, well, it's one coffee mug that some of their schmo can go <laughs> grab for themselves. All right. But, um, just, yeah. I remember but, that scene. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is just one of those games where it's pretty clear it, clear the demographic was for. And, like, say if the likes of Crash Bandicoot are too hard for you, this is pretty. This is a pretty decent replacement. Even if I do think maybe the, if the controls aren't quite as solid. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think I remember another Crash Bandicoot clone that I played as a kid on the PS1 as well, but it was for the 101 Dalmatian series. That one I've never played. Ah. Yeah, I still own the game, but I have no way of recording it, nor at PlayStation. Didn't they have basically like a little advert for that in the Glenn Close ad at live action movie? Yes, yes, they did. Because I do own those movies too. We used to buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. Stiff. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought. So what do you get? So real quick, just to stay top, what do you guys think about that live action Lilo Stitch movie they're making? Huh? Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, I forgot they were doing that. <laughs> it's just part of the list, folks. They're not gonna stop until they've tapped every single piece of animated medium that they've ever created. They got to have money. Well, you know what? Like, 
You know what, just to reverse things around, I heard that they're kind of doing something akin to that for Disney+, Plus. only they're going to be remaking a few live-action films like Home Alone and whatnot. I would adore it if it ends up those are the remakes that end up being animated. Like an animated Home Alone, animated... What else did they have on their thing? Uh, um, there was Tailspin, there was... Wait, that's already no, animated. No, no, I'm talking about like the, the live-action movies that they're putting on Disney+. Plus. I know, I know Home Alone was one of them. I, For the life of me, I'm... So, oh, oh, uh, Cheaper by the Dozen. Oh. Cheaper by the dozen, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, one yeah. other thing I forgot to mention: uh, Lilo can is better with explosives than, than Crash has ever been because she can actually pick, she can actually carry TNT crates. What about nitro crates? Uh, there are no nitro crates in this game. Aw, but we green have green pots. Oops. Oh no, the green pots only the green pots uh, c uh, pop out health. Oh. What's with the voodoo triangle thing? The oh that that's actually an interesting little. Uh, it's a summoning tool, for lack of a better word. Oh, it's like when, whenever she made her uh, classmates into those spoons and put yeah. them in the pickle jar and shook it. Yeah, the whole thing they had to be punished. My friends need to be punished. Yeah, no, what, what is this? What is this summon? Donk. That. The oh. ice cream man. The ice cream man. The ice yeah. cream man. But why? Everything's already one hit kill as it is. Well, he's a one hit kill. It's just one of those things that they. Just, it's just oh, one of those wait. things that they thought would be fun to implement. Again, for kids. Yeah. Especially whenever he drops his ice cream. Every I can only think of one instance where he actually managed to take a lick of the ice cream, and even then, it was like that dream sequence at the opening of Stitch Has a Glitch. Oh. That's the dream sequence, and that's how, that's how you're supposed yeah. to know that nothing is right. Yeah, that he eats the ice cream. Oh, that's another one I guess I can ask, sis. Have you seen Stitch Has a Glitch? Yes, I have. What'd you think of it? That movie made me cry. I know. Ugh. That movie was oddly refreshing after all those years of of the of, action, of the TV series doing its thing. I guess. Yeah. I I, I Stitch as a glitch was okay. I don't know why. I, just, I guess some of it felt a bit heavy-handed to me, especially after the emotional rock, especially after the emotional roller coaster that was the original Lilo and Stitch. Um, oh yeah. I mean there yeah. was no. I mean it's a it's a Disney sequel at the end of the day. There was no they were going to top it. But I think I think that was around that movie's inception, that movie's creation, where the sequels were starting to actually share a similar level of budget to be a theatrical film. Yeah, because I was about to say, like, I think, like, Stitch Has a Glitch is one of, I think, only two films I can think of that actually look pretty spot on to the original. Like, it looks really devil There was that movie, there was, um, there was oh. the the heavily despised Mulan 2, and Ugh. I think it was actually one or two other movies. Am I the only one who thinks that's decent? No. Yes. Okay, never mind. I mean, I find it okay. It's the uh, Eddie Murphy parts with Mushu trying to break up uh, Mulan. Uh, it's, not and... Eddie Mer it's not Eddie Murphy. I know. <laughs> and that's what makes it even I worse. I forgot his name. Mushu. Mushu's. Mushu's part in the uh, story yeah. was just not good. I mean, A, it's guilty that's... pleasures. A, yeah. it's guilty pleasures. And B, you also like Baby's Day Out. I'll, I'll give you that one. That was kind of a joke I had with Pi, where it's like, the, the Eddie Murphy dragon, it's not Eddie Murphy. Even worse! <laughs> <laughs> like, besides that, just his character was just not right in that movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, dude, Bushi was, de is de was despicable in that movie. Yeah. You know what, maybe really that's... Was. You know what? Maybe that's partly why they're. Maybe that's partly why they kicked him out of the Mulan remake, where it's like, man, this guy's a jerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, all he really served to, served in that entire movie was being the comic relief. Yeah. yeah. Maybe at least one or one or, one or two moments where he actually did help save the day, but otherwise, yeah. I like, you yeah. know, for the longest time in the Mulan movie, I never got that Batman reference that he did. Like, who are you? I'm your worst nightmare. Oh, that. I thought you were gonna that say was the best part. <laughs> I, that was great. But I thought you were. I thought you were about to combine and say, "Who oh. are you? I'm Timon." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll leave that to Steve. That's his thing. Like I, like thing, I remember that originally. scene. One that I like is like when she's like taking a bath in the river, and you see like the guys going in there. It's like, okay, there's a couple of things that I know they're bound to notice. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's like I so never want to see a naked man again, and then the whole group of men go past, <laughs> and she just blinks and just walks away. Hey, don't look at me. I ain't biting no more butts. <laughs> and you know what? It's like. Yeah, I, that's a good joke, Pi, but I can't help but think that considering how people are nowadays, they would take that joke and look well too into it. Yeah. Yay, I wouldn't be surprised. Even though I had Cannon Milan as bisexual for myself, but that's just me. Didn't they make her bi in Once Upon a Time? I 
think so. I only see because uh, I know the, she did appear. I mean, I could see Shang as being bisexual, but Mulan. I don't know. It's my head cannon. Don't surprise me. Honestly, I forgot that show was even a thing. A lot of people did. Yeah. <laughs> All I remember is that it actually made Frozen somewhat decent. Well, that's because. Oh yeah, that's just... when I started. I started watching that when I'm... Frozen came on. I just want yeah. to say I'm not. I'm not really sure how many people are aware of this, but Ooh, Shang's voice actor is openly gay. Really? Huh. Uh huh. Interesting. But I was about to say it's like. Well, I think a lot of the reason why Frozen was actually decent in that show is because, to their credit, the Frozen representation of that was actually a lot more closer to the original book. Like, the glass that, like, made everyone really pricky to each other, I think was also taken from the book. Oh, I did not know that. I just I, I just saw all the actors just, like, play decent roles better than the cartoon counterparts. I'm sorry, guys. I'm feeling just random today for some reason. It's a it's a Sunday, like you like we said, it was a, it's a lazy day. Yeah. But um, actually, one thing I will say regarding the game, real quick, is that I remember um, there's a there's a later level that also takes place in the beach, and um, it's actually there where you find a few 2D sprites laying in the background of just random characters from the movie, like not like uh, like Nani and uh, her and her boyfriend, just uh, David, just David, just um, yeah. repeated repeated oh, on the occasion, occasion just to show that there is some life on this beach, and it's like oh. uh, that character specific, those characters specifically. Really? It's nice to oh, live on an the... island when it's, there's nothing but surrounded by water. Ah! There we go. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. More caffeine for you. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, it's funny you bring that up, Pi, because um, that scene was is does actually play in this game, but yeah. of course I had to cut that out. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. The movie's old. I think you could totally, but, but yeah, not, th yeah. This is that era they played a lot of movies like that. That's why I keep quoting it. <laughs> You want to know one random scene from the movie that still gets me every time is the bit where, like, Cobra first meets <laughs> Stitch for the first time, and Stitch just uh -huh. chucks the book at his head. <laughs> that is one of my favorite moments. Like, there's something about the, just the abruptness of that that gets me every time. Aww. Aww. Damn it. He died. The lobster. Yeah, no, that was great. No, and it's so quick and so, like, visceral. Like, he loses his glasses immediately. Just... <laughs> hard. <laughs> it's like... Bing. Good day. <laughs> I remember seeing that uh, same scene, but in gift form. But the uh, Photoshop uh, Nigel Thornsberry face <laughs> over it. It says oh, no. smashing. Jeez, who, who voiced who voiced Bubbles again? Uh, Vic Vic Rains. Okay, yeah. I still love the I still love the. Uh, don't I know you? Uh, government's uh, government's figuring. Uh, 1936. Ah, yes. You had hair. Had hair then. Yeah, you had hair then. You know, it's so funny to me that that particular character, like for for, for all for most good chunk of the movie, you just know him as Mr. Bubbles. And you're just thinking that's the silliest name I've ever heard of for a CIA Cobra. agent. And then and then yeah, later on you learn his actual his actual code name. It's like oh fuck, now he's just a lot yeah, more you, badass. Well, yeah, no, you learn that in the first scene where he's like, my name's Mr. Bubbles. He's like, your knuckles say Cobra. Say Cobra. Oh, oh, right, right. Right. I also like. I also love at they the end where he's Cobra. like. <laughs> I really am overdue to watch the first movie again. It's good. I we still should watch that as a movie out. night. Yeah, I was gonna say we should do that as a movie night. Here, and okay. that, 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 cue the gift of me saying, "Here, educate yourself." Just so. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. it's like actually she's just ugly. <gasps> <gasps> ugly. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> actually, you know what? Well, damn, that was another movie that, that uh, Dave. That, oh, excuse me. Oh, Good night. Thank you. I'm blanking on the name. I'm talking I'll, about the fact that Jumba's actor, the fact that he's no longer with us. I'll save myself. Oh yeah. By, with my rolling ball form, and then I realize, oh wait, this thing, those things can actually crush the ball form. Yeah. Really? I was lying. This thing isn't completely invulnerable. Wow. No, another thing. It's completely speech. vulnerable. I do have to say another Ooh. character that I like is Pleakley in the movies. Oh no, Pleakley's Ple Ple oh, awesome. Oh, he's, Ple he's adorable. I love his oh. voice actor, and when I figured out he was in Vader oh. Zim as uh, Commander, well, as yep. Tallest Purple, and I was he, like, yes! And he's he's just, just, my favorite part with him was the, mus the mosquito scene. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I love and the whole flock, they're nosing me with their noses. Now they're... Now they're, they're... Ah! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> hey, Myrtle. 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 So now we're going to have ourselves a little race with uh, Lilo's <coughs> friend, Myrtle. How does this race uh, de demolish her? Oh. Well, what? you're on That's foot, which make, makes me make think Myrtle has the advantage, but some random jackass lays a whole what? bunch of explosives on the road. Yes. What? She's on a trike. How fast could it be? Well, faster what than the? Being... Oh, Whoops. Jesus. Who did this? <laughs> there were children <laughs> oh. on the streets. <laughs> 
Well, one of them's near the ocean, but uh, that's besides whoop, the point. Whoop, whoop. Run, Myrtle. <laughs> In this case, Lilo has the advantage. I like how they choose that sprite of her, just like yelling. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's you can tell it was just kind of a rush. You just slapped on there. I'm more so curious as to why she doesn't have the common sense to oh. just drive around the barrels. Because it's a it's a, it's a one line road. But at the same oh. time, oh, I ho I really oh geez, part of me is hoping that they don't in the live action remake they don't try and do something Whoop. where they change Nani's role because I, I like the idea of Nani yeah, please being, the older, being the older sister who's trying her best kind of thing yeah I mean that just it just made the whole well, thing all the more human maybe they well, can add true. even some of the deleted scenes that they cut out that made it more like mature uh, yeah oh, oh when she scares everybody with the hurricane with the types no no the one when she talks oh. about her uh, oh hello Mr. Bubbles Oh, hey, Mr. Bubbles. God, your face looks like a potato today. <laughs> it kind of looks more like a peanut. Or the other one where she points to a bunch of tourists of where the uh, beach was at. <laughs> Calling her a local. Why don't you try leading by example? This was is not Cobra Bubbles. This guy sounds like he should be reading an ASMR book. Okay. <laughs> what, if, what if that was Cobra's other job was to read uh, audiobooks? You know what? You say that. I'm pretty sure people would not object to Ving Rhames doing ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do. So, oh well. And it's just like, where did he go? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, let's go this way. <laughs> he just went frog. that way. Aw, oh, hey, yo, Stitch. Time to collect some vinyl records. Uh, maybe some other time, because okay. that's going to be the end of our little look at so, here. But so, the whole, was, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, fine. Basically, the whole thing throughout the entire game is that it, uh, during every section of the game, you're collecting a certain amount of um, MacGuffins. Like, in the first one, we were collecting photos. This uh, this next one, we were going to be collecting vinyl records, and I don't know what exactly goes on from there. Like, I'll be honest, I actually haven't played through this game entirely, even though I'm pretty sure it's one of those games I could easily beat within a day. So, uh, uh... as the person playing it... What do you think? Does did the game age at all well to you? Was it a struggle to get to that point in the game to record it all? It didn't seem like a struggle. It didn't. It's not really that much of a struggle. The only thing is that it's definitely no Crash Bandicoot or Donald Duck going Quackers, where the controls just actually felt so nice. Here, you can tell tell they were a little bit of, bit of jank. And I mean, considering this was also a game that was developed by Blitz Games, I mean, you sort of have to expect that. Yes, the same people who made the Bratz uh, Rock Angels. Yeah, and the Fairly yeah. Parents games, which those, those I think are some of their better games. Huh. But um, anyway, that's it for our Lilo and Stitch look at. Um, I'm James Makestree. I'm Lucky Jack 20. Hi, I'm Princess Alita. Pymania Galaxia. Mika Nalaquista. <laughs> <laughs>